While video games are often funded by the developers themselves, government incentives or via publishing companies, another viable mechanism comes from crowdfunding where the money is pledged directly from potential players. Since around the 2012 timeframe, Kickstarter has been and remains one of the most popular crowdfunding platforms within video game development, and we've covered many games on the platform over the years. After a brief hiatus in the series, today in this video, we're taking a further look at some of the most exciting and intriguing games currently looking for support and investment on the platform. Up first, and with nearly a month still to go in its campaign as this video goes live, Coral Island has already breezed past its initial goal of $70,000. The game expected to come out in early access around this October timeframe onto PCs via Steam, with a full launch a year later around the same timeframe. Now we're all too readily aware there are plenty of other games already out there that seemingly do what Coral Island is looking to deliver. That said, the team behind this one's development are at pains within their campaign page to say they are looking to reimagine the farming sim game, and while their work is inspired by the classics where players will grow crops, nature animals and befriend islanders, in Coral Island this overall experience is said to be elevated by making use of more modern methods and by making the game even more inclusive. There's no denying this all has the looks of something fans of Harvest Moon and of course Stardew Valley might want to add to their wish lists. The trailer suggests aside from the aforementioned farming and animal nurturing elements, players will also be able to undertake a number of romantic engagements and also start up community level improvements such as creating a recycling center to tidy up the trash you can find while all out and about and also a community garden. What's really looking quite impressive though, which gives Coral Island that little bit of differentiation, is the ability to head off and dive into the caverns and coral reefs in order to protect and save them all the while helping rare fish survive and flourish. Stretch goals include additional mini-games at 125k. At 300,000 US dollars, the game will get a port onto consoles, including the Switch, and at half a million, well at this point the devs will add support for mod compatibility. There's something about Coral Reef that, as the saying goes, looks rather wholesome, and we're thinking with how long there is still left to run in this campaign, it might raise enough to bring it about onto the consoles. Up next, and in Pine, we have a story-driven game expected to come to mobiles at some point in the summer of 2022. Looking for 80,000 US dollars and after a day or so of the campaign as this video goes up, the team have already brought in close to half of this funding goal. Pine is a story-driven game about what the developers say is one of loss and letting go, all told by the way of a perspective of a woodworker. Now this puts us immediately in mind of something like the utterly delightful Florence or perhaps If Found, with it telling its story wordlessly via your player interactions. We can see certain elements of this and how it may work within the campaign trailer, such as where the woodcutter carves a figure and in certain other places we can see an interactive jester suggestions to help move the scene on. We suspect the associated musical score will yet further enhance the overall experience, adding to the ambiance in what reads and feels like a deeply personal project. At 80,000 US dollars the game will come to iOS and Android devices, at 85 grand, Pine will also ship onto PCs via Steam, with other stretch goals to include upgraded visuals, audio, and at 145,000, Pine will come to the Switch. Rewards include, naturally, the game art prints, the ability to become a beta tester, and at 300 and 500 US dollars respectively, signed artwork professionally framed, and a hand-painted woodworker that's a 6-inch tall 3D model of the game's main protagonist. Pine looks every bit delightful with it blending aspects of interactive video games and visual novels. Like the previous game in this rundown, with so much time left in the campaign with it wrapping up on March the 4th, we're hoping it does well enough for that port onto the Switch. Up 
up next and something completely different to the first two offerings with it getting funded within the first 12 hours of going live. Currently under development by Green Boy Games, a single developer based out of Barcelona, the Shapeshifter is a Game Boy exclusive offering. Ask your parents or head over to Google if that name check doesn't mean much to you. In this one, you'll play as Elliot who happens to bump into an elf one day while out camping. As you do in video games, you agree to help the elf and save the elven world from an evil wizard's spell. As you go about saving the world, you're given the power to change into any animal you touch, meaning you're able to span many parts of the landscape you'd usually be unable to get across. As we write, the campaign is over 500 backers, and having brought in over 33,000 euros versus a target of 6,000, stretch goals now include a port, if that's the correct phrase, onto the NES at 40,000, and at 60,000 the game will feature additional gameplay. The campaign doesn't finish until the middle of March, with the finished product expected to ship in May of this year. Moving on and something from former Obsidian and Telltale developers, we have a long journey to an uncertain end with it looking to secure $40,000 in funding with a launch date towards the end of the year. We've been lucky enough to play a short little demo of this already, about 30 or so minutes of it, with it giving a little snapshot into what we might expect with the full game. With its premise of being a character-driven space opera, this game will see you travelling across the universe with you playing the part of a sentient spaceship. It's all said to be heavily driven by the overall story, and like all good little snippets of gameplay, the demo does have us wanting to know more and see in which direction the game heads off. You too can pick up the demo on the game's Kickstarter homepage, and like all of the games featured in this video, there's a link down in the description. Welcome to the world of Ova Magica. In a place where blobs and humans live side by side. A new adventure is waiting for you. Next up, and having surged past its goal of 20,000 euros in a matter of hours, Ova Magica is again yet another single player farming and monster taming game with life sim elements and yet doesn't it look so utterly adorable. Having already taken in more than a hundred thousand euros, it's clear where the game draws its inspiration. Stardew Valley is obvious, as is Slime Rancher and perhaps also Ooblets and of course Pokemon. As for the gameplay, well it seemingly has it all. Naturally there's farming and of course there's romance elements as well as monster taming, crafting and plenty of other activities to keep you busy. As for the rewards, well players can pick up physical copies of the game for Switch and PC as well as other knickknacks here and there with us particularly liking what seems to be a limited edition and highly collectible lunchbox which contains all of the physical and available digital rewards. Over Magica's campaign finishes on February the 26th and at this rate it could be one of the most successful campaigns in video game Kickstarter of recent years. And the last game to feature in this Kickstarter showcase for early February 2021 we have Beacon Pines. Looking to raise 30,000 US dollars so far with just over a month to go in the campaign the team have brought in just close to half of that amount. Expected to come to Steam, the Switch and Stadia towards the end of the year, Beacon Pines is a cute and yet decidedly eerie if that's the right word, looking adventure game that's told from within and outside of a magical storybook. Players will take on the role of both the reader of the story and also of Luca, the central character. Featuring a beautifully penned mountain town, you'll explore the story and while doing collect magical word charms which you're able to use to make friends from the folks you meet while also being able to use them to change how the story progresses. In a neat touch, if you don't like how things are going, you can always open the book at any point and go back to make changes to your in-game decisions. It's all a wonderful concept with its art style being, well, utterly exquisite. There's a demo to be found on the game's Kickstarter homepage and having played it, we wholeheartedly recommend it. So there we go, that's all we've got time for in today's video. 
Please let us know what you think of these games and this series as a whole down in the comments. And as always, many thanks for watching. Perhaps feel free to give that like button a cheeky little prod. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Either way, all the best and we'll see you all again here soon for more indie game videos.